You got to say it right. Um, we're doing this series called Paths, and and um, this message is the first in the series, and it is called Way, and it's it means that your choices matter. Your choices matter. So today we begin a new series of messages, and, and there's this overarching theme verse that is uh, from Psalm 119, verse 105. You could pro probably say it together. Um, I don't know, my goodness, the typist, I can tell that he really was suffering from flu-like symptoms. It, trust me, it's not Psalm 105, it's Psalm 119, verse 105. But your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Amen. The artwork is intentional. Notice the cross at the center of the path. Amen. Uh, that's our hope. Jesus Christ is at the center of it all. That's right. And I think it's symbolic. Uh, Jesus Christ is equated with the living word. So your word is a lamp to my feet and it's a light uh, to my path. Now, for just a moment, think about the big picture. Our vision involves worshiping, serving, growing, connecting, going. I told you that in 2016, we're going to have a season for each one of those, a season of worship, a season of going, a, a season of connecting. And, and so today, starting today, February 14th, uh, and continuing all the way through Sunday, March 27th, Easter Sunday, we are having a season of worship. And I, my hope is that this season for our church family will just grip each one of our hearts so that we worship the Lord in ways like we haven't done recently, in ways that are extravagant. It doesn't mean that we don't do the other things too. Of course we continue to serve, grow and go. We continue to connect. But it simply means that collectively, collectively our focus for all of these days leading up to Easter Sunday is to worship the Lord our God, our Savior. Um, maybe the way to say that is that we're looking at ways that will help us be better worshipers. And I think this teaching series is going to help us to be better worshipers. I think it's appropriate that our season of worship begins today on Valentine's Day. Uh, for this stretch, we are expressing our love to God. That's really what worship is, expressing our love to our God. And uh, especially especially when we move into the next teaching series in the month of March, which is titled Main Things. You've got to be part of that. It will be life-changing. Uh, think about a path. What is a path? A path is a route that someone has walked. It's not a path if you're walking it for the first time. If you're walking it for the first time, you might be an explorer. Maybe we should call you Lewis or Clark. But if you're walking down a path, it means something that someone has walked before you. Think of some words that might be substitutes for the word path. Synonyms for path. Well, you could say patterns. You could say routines. You might say practices or habits. One word that might be a good substitute for this series is the word trajectory. The trajectory that you are on. Think of the football pass, the trajectory of the ball, where it's going to fall. Are you hitting your target for your life goals? So that's really what this series is about. Did you know that every single morning you have a routine for getting ready? I mean, you really do. You brush your teeth the same way every morning. You shampoo your hair the same way. You lather up in the shower every day the same way. You've been doing it for years, and you haven't changed it. In fact, someone told me recently, I, I take a bath once a week, whether I need it or not. You know, and I just, I really appreciate that kind of discipline. I mean, I think all of us really appreciate when you take a bath. <laughs> 
But no, seriously, think about it. That the point is, for your physical well-being, you have a routine. It's a routine that works. You have a practice. You have set your trajectory. You need to do the same exact thing for your spirit person. That's right. Sometimes it, it may not be that exciting. It might feel routine, but you must set the trajectory for your spiritual well-being. And this series is all about making sure that your life paths move you in a good direction. Now, for the main text this morning, I'm going to read a portion of Scripture from the Proverbs. I want you to see if you detect a theme as we're reading it. Uh, way. <coughs> way. <laughs> now, pronounce it correctly. It must be spoken with that little bit of a surfer dude flair, or maybe the volley girl, you know. Way. And I, I realize that that word is so 15 minutes ago. That word is so 3G. I get it. Nonetheless, at the risk of time stamping myself, there was a popular way of saying the word way at the beginning of this century, and it was way. <laughs> For a number of years, I read Proverbs one chapter every day, and what I would do is read the chapter for that day that coincided with a calendar. It works out perfectly. There's 31 chapters of Proverbs, 31 days in the month. And so what I would do is read the chapter for the day. So for instance, I, I would read chapter two. And as I started to read it, I would pray, Lord, give me a, what I would call a wisdom verse, my wisdom verse for the day. So I would read, you know, chapter 2 of Proverbs, and one of those verses, every time it would happen, would resonate in my spirit in such a way that it really spoke to me. And I would try as best possible to commit that verse to memory, at least the essence of what that verse taught, and try to live that verse that day. I was amazed how transformational that was. Truly, God's Word is living and active. Amen? It is, um, I like to say, it's living and interactive. Right. It will interact with your lives. Yeah. And so what I wanted to know after reading Proverbs 2 so many times, how did this repetition of this theme escape my watchful eye? Because I had read it so many times and hadn't even thought of it. But then one day as I read Proverbs 2, I see this interaction. And so see if these words from Proverbs 2 do not strike you as intended to drive home a point. I'm reading portions of Proverbs chapter 2 and uh, in just a moment you'll see certain words highlighted, highlighted. Verse 7 says, He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to, the, to those, now notice this, He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. If you drop down to verse 12, wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men. From men whose words are perverse, who have left the straight paths to walk in dark ways. Verse 15 whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. Are you seeing this theme? It just is worded in so many different ways. Verse 16 says, Wisdom will save you also from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman with her seductive words. And dropping down to verse 18, Surely her house leads down to death and her paths to the spirit of the dead. None who go to her return or attain the paths of life. And then verse 20, thus you will walk in the ways of the good and keep, the, keep to the paths of the righteous. So do you get it? Your way, your path, your walk, your course, it matters. It is very, very important to choose the right path. What consequences are there in my life today that are a direct result of choices that I have made? What decisions am I making right now 
that will have impact on consequences that are down the road yet to be seen. Now, here's, here's an analogy that could kind of bring it into focus for you. Let's say that you lived in the woods and every single day you needed to walk down a path to get to a river and that's where you found the things that you needed. Water to survive, fish to eat. You lived in the woods in your shanty house and you walk a path and you've gone down that path every day and you never veer off the path. You always stay on the path and you go to the river. But one day, as you're walking down the river, you notice a building. In fact, it looks like a house off in the distance. And you're so intrigued by what that is, you just hadn't noticed it before. You decide to step off of your regular path and journey towards the building. And so you're walking along, along clumping on branches, and, and you're going through and avoiding trees that have fallen and meandering around bushes. Nobody has walked that way before. And you're creating a new path as you go, and you go in the building. And, and when you go inside the building, you notice that the shelves are lined with books. And you see there's a note on the table, and, and the note says, Feel free to use any of these books as much as you want. They're all about how to build your log cabin. But the only rule is you can't take any of the books out of the house. So what do you do? You read and you read and you want to build a nice log cabin. And you're reading the books. And, you, and to honor the owner's wishes, you put the book back on the shelf. And you walk back down the path until you connect to the real path the one that you've already been walking. Now, you know that you can't take the books every single day. You can't take them back home. You're going to honor the request of the building owner. And so every day now, you go down the normal path, and now you step off, and you follow your same footprints from the day before. What you are doing, you're creating a new path. You're, you're setting in motion something that hasn't existed before. And over time, that new path will start to become worn. It'll start to, you start to see more and more dirt, less and less grass. The shrubbery will give way. And finally, you're going to have a path, a new path that diverges off of the worn path, the one that you've used for many years. This is similar to what happens in our minds when we learn something new. And we'll talk a lot about that next week when the entire message will be from the book of Philippians. This morning, I'm going to give you an acronym to help you remember how this happens. It's the word habit. Habit in three steps. Honest appraisal, be intentional, talk to God. Each of the letters spells out habit. The first point is honest appraisal. H-A, honest appraisal. Say honest appraisal. Honest appraisal. Be honest about the situation. Appraise the situation. What I mean is, identify what this current path has gotten you. What has it gotten you? What has it done for you? Be honest. Appraise the situation. When I participate in this habit, this behavior, this practice, I feel a sense of pride. I feel good about myself. I feel a sense of accomplishment. I'm happy with my decision. Or when I participate in this practice, this behavior, this, this habit, I feel what? I, I feel temporary pleasure but long-term guilt. I feel ashamed. I feel like I wouldn't want people to know. I feel like I want to hide from God. Now, be honest about your lifestyle. Be honest about your choices, the paths, and the ways that you are living. And so, in this stage, you want to look at your feelings, you want to look at your thoughts, and, uh, and even how your body is responding to the habits of your life. 
what's happening physiologically in you. You want to be as honest about the results as possible as you're creating this new walk with God. It's, it's almost like you're calling yourself to the witness stand of your life. You are saying to yourself, Keith, get on the witness stand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? And then you appraise your life. And you look it over from every point of view. You know yourself better than anyone. Except for God. Yeah. He knows all of us even better than we know ourselves. Right. And so... You're, you can see this very clearly in these verses that we read from Proverbs 2. I'm going to put them on the screen again. Now, his walk is blameless. So it's not just the, the walk or the pathway or, or the course or, or the path or any of those things, but what's attached to it in the Proverbs. His walk is blameless. His course is just. Look at verse, uh, the next verse. His way is is the way of faithful ones. He protects the way of his faithful ones. This is what a lifestyle of worship looks like. It's an honest appraisal. You also see it down at the end at verse number 20. Ways of the good and paths of the righteous. Now, all of those things are good. These are a go. These are things that we want to have happen in our life. But there are some things that are listed in Proverbs 2 that should really give us cause for caution. Ways of wicked men. Left the straight paths. Walk in dark ways. Look at verse number 15. Paths are crooked. Devious in their ways. The wayward woman with her seductive words. See, there's some honest appraisal going on here. And verse number 18, her house leads down to death. Her paths to the spirits of the dead. And then these chilling words, none who go to her return or attain the paths of life. What you need to do, what I need to do, is as we begin this season of worship, Let's take inventory. Let's be honest in our appraisal. Lord, search my heart. And not just what's here, but how it got there. What paths, what ways, what decisions have I chosen? And now this is the result. And now what I want to do is present it to God and say, God, help me to choose those honorable paths, those honorable ways. Not, it doesn't have anything to do with whether you love me or not. You love me. You forgive me. But in order to be the successful Christian that I long to be, I want to be pure before you. And so we do a, an honest appraisal. It's a holy inventory of what's happening. And then next, be intentional. Be intentional. Over the next six weeks during this season of worship, you're going to be intentional. You're, you're going to have to be intentional if you're going to, to really grow. And by the way, my prayer is that all of us will learn new aspects of worship. I think for some of us, we're going to learn new words to say when we're praying. Maybe you get frustrated and you think, when I pray, I feel like I'm saying the same thing all the time. God can help you with that. He can give you new language to pray. It could be that God will give you new words to express in adoration and in worship. Maybe when all of the whole church family is praising and worshiping, it could be that that's a little awkward for you. and You think, I just, I want to, but I just don't have words to say. But I'm praying that God helps us to grow. And, and even as we are more intentional about this, we're choosing our paths carefully. It's no accident that our season of worship corresponds with Lent. The more traditional churches observe what is called Lent. It's from an old English word and more predominantly it's an old Dutch word. Lent means spring. It's like springtime. It's not quite springtime. But they use the calendar year 
when it gets long about springtime, in the 40 days leading up to Easter, Lent. And so last Wednesday was Ash Wednesday uh, in the Anglican and um, Lutheran churches. Uh, the rector places his finger in ashes and he, he draws the cross on the forehead. I, I don't do that. I'm not going to do that. Don't worry. Some of you are thinking, oh boy, is he going to put a cross? In? You know, last Wednesday night, I did not mark a cross on everybody's head that came to the Bible study. But if you remember, it was strategic. Now you probably get it. We talked about um, re repentance and repenting in sackcloth and ashes. And just that was just the heart of... of a sacred assembly calling us all together and repenting in sackcloth and ashes. And, and so, uh, over these next days leading up to Easter, a lot of Christians use this as a time for fasting and prayer. I'm, I'm not suggesting that because we started off the year that way. But I am telling you that be sensitive to God because these next days, these six weeks leading up to Easter Sunday, could be it could be a very very special 40-day period for you as you're growing in this season of worship. Here's some tips for you to have unbroken fellowship in worship. Interrupt wrong thoughts and patterns when they arise. Interrupt them. So, you're just like me, no doubt. I mean, you. there's an old saying that um, you, you don't have to, you can't stop the well, I can't even remember how it goes. Let me think for just a second. You can't keep a bird from flying over your head, but you can keep, can keep him from roosting in your hair. And that really is true. There's a, you know, there's thoughts that just fly. Um, they come into your mind. And sometimes, even as a blood-bought child of God who is walking in a lifestyle of repentance, you can be inundated with Thoughts, I call them thought missiles. The enemy, he tries to target your mind and he will do it through any way possible, through other individuals, through, through media, through uh, computer, through uh, songs on the radio. This is why we guard our hearts. We have to be so cautious about keeping the gateways of our hearts and minds because the enemy is continually trying to launch thoughts at us. But here's the thing. As soon as a thought comes in your mind that is contrary to God's word and you know it, you interrupt it and you just say, nope, don't even need to finish that. Stop. Say no or cancel when an old thought or an impulse comes in. Just say, I'm not that person anymore. Amen. Amen. I mean, this is more than mind over matter. We're not just saying just say no. What we are saying is, that you are a blood-bought child of God. Positionally, you are not that person anymore. You've been bought by the blood of Jesus. You belong to Him. Keep treading your new path. Commit. Here's a big deal. Just commit. If you're trying to change a habit, commit right now. I'm going to change. Have a plan. When the temptation comes, when the barrage of thoughts come, be ahead of the game and say, you didn't catch me off guard. I knew this was coming. Here's what I'm going to do. And you act it out. Have a plan and commit to it. So it's honest appraisal. Be intentional. And T stands for talk to God. Don't forget God knows us better than anyone. Prayer is the best thing you can do. Everybody say, talk to God. Talk to God. You know, remember that prayer is dialogue. There's nothing more annoying than a person who hogs the conversation, right? Do you, do you know people like that? And then they're talking along, and then they get to the end of the sentence, and you, you've got a thought, and then you kind of go, yeah, and I, oh, oh, oh. And they keep rattling on and on, and, and I mean... What if you were God and that's how people prayed? <laughs> oh, good, the list is done. Bye, God, see you later. Prayer is dialogue. Um, remember that. It, it, it's so important. Don't let prayer be reduced to just spouting out a bunch of requests and needs. Be sure that you leave time to listen for his response. The lifestyle 
of prayer is give and take. It's the rise and the fall. It's the hurrying and the waiting. It's sort of like the breath diaphragm on an accordion. My mother-in-law plays the accordion beautifully. Mamie, we need to have you come play it someday, just a special. It's fantastic. But, but I think of that, that's what prayer is like. It's, it's breathing. It's, it's me sharing things with my Lord. And then listening and hearing His response to my heart. And then I say, and Lord... Thank you for that. Here's what that causes me to think. And, and I voice some more to him. And then I listen as he pours into me. Talk to God. The lifestyle of worship, it's so important that we talk to God. Amen. So honest appraisal. Be intentional. Talk to God. Each week I want to leave you with a trail marker. And this is it. It's just a, a powerful thought from the Bible about our paths. This is from Nehemiah 9.19. It says, Because of your great compassion, you did not abandon them in the wilderness. By day, the pillar of cloud did not fail to guide them on their path, nor the pillar of fire by night to shine on the way they were to take. You know, that's talking about the Israelites when they were leaving the land of bondage. God did not abandon them in the wilderness. Maybe you feel like you're in the wilderness and you think, how am I going to make it through to the other side? Guess what? God will not abandon you. Nehemiah was one of the leaders in a a second redemption that happened when they had been exiled and now come home and, and he got to experience that second wind of blessing and favor. God didn't abandon them. Nehemiah says he won't abandon us either. And you and I today, we can say, guess what? God didn't abandon the Israelites. He didn't abandon them even when they were exiled. He will not abandon us either. He will guide them on their path he will be a pillar of fire by night and shine on the way that they were to take. He will show you the way. Amen. And next week, when we come together, we're going to expound that Psalm 119, verse 105 a little more. The understanding of what that means, that each step, each step I take, He is a lamp for my feet. I pray that He will be that for you on your way. Amen. So this morning, the sermon has been called Way. And I remember that they used to say, no way. <laughs> yeah, way. Yes, way. Yes, way. Yes, there is a way. Yes, there is. Amen. You might feel like, I cannot make it. But you can make it. And you can turn over a new leaf for yourself today. You're going to become a dynamic worshiper beginning today. And at the end of these 40 days, you're going to be a new person. I believe it. I believe that with all my heart. Amen. Stand with me. and Worship team, would you guys come and just play some music? We're just going to close with a prayer in which we ask that the Lord would fill our hearts with His presence. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. In fact, I, I feel the Lord just saying to... to one of the great ways of being a worshiper is to sing. And I want us to do one of our songs that we've already done this morning. We're going to do it again. And while we're just closing out this service with, with worship, you know, I know many of you, you're already great worshipers here in this place today. You have been for some time. But I, I want to just say that every single one of us can grow in this area. Every single one of us can become closer and more intimate Amen. to the Lord. So Father, right now, we ask for your sweet Holy Spirit to just settle upon us.
Let your spirit just come down like a blanket upon us. I pray for your comfort to settle upon individuals who may be struggling, Lord. Maybe there's Lord, we present ourselves to you right now in this moment. We are asking you, God, to fill our hearts with a new love. A new level of worship over these days. It is a season of worship and it all belongs to you, O oh Lord. We're devoted to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I've heard a thousand stories about what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and they tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father, it's true. 